decades, people living on the West Coast have been warned about an earthquake so strong it could produce a tsunami the size of a 10-story building. They call it the big one. The big one. The big one. Now, researchers finally have a better picture of how and where that big one could happen. We do expect this event to be catastrophic. And based on what we know now, some are predicting that when it does arrive, it could be even more catastrophic than we imagined. In Canada and the US, we live on top of what's called the North American tectonic plate. But under the ocean floor, just off the Pacific West Coast, that plate is intersecting with another plate, the Juan de Fuca plate. Over time, that plate has been slowly moving towards and getting shoved under the North American plate. Most of the time, the two plates are more or less locked in place, pushing against each other and building stress. But if one of them slips, they can generate what's called a megathrust earthquake, the most powerful kind of earthquake we know of, and a giant tsunami. The last time that happened was in the year 1700, and that's got experts worried the next one could be around the corner. We think the recurrence intervals for the largest earthquakes that occur in this region are 500 years. So, you know, we're, we're 400. The probabilities are high that we're going to see a big megathrust earthquake there in the next 100 years. But beyond a vague timeline of when this might happen, researchers had very little information to go on. And part of that is because of just how quiet this fault line has been. It's eerily quiet. So in you know, other plate boundary systems, like in California, along the San Andreas Fault System, they tend to have you know, a few big earthquakes, but they also have lots and lots of smaller earthquakes. And those small earthquakes illuminate the structure of the plate boundary system. Without those smaller earthquakes, researchers weren't able to get a clear understanding of what it looked like or where the most concerning parts could be. So a few years ago, a group of scientists loaded up a ship full of state-of-the-art technology and set sail into the Pacific to map it out. We uh, worked from the California-Oregon border to um, the northern limit offshore Vancouver Island. The idea was to create images with sound, the same way bats do with echolocation. They put out microphones, both on the boat and by running waterproof cables along the ocean floor. Then the researchers sent out a bunch of sound pulses directly into the fault line, and the microphones picked up the echoes. And then we use various algorithms to process the data and generate these high-resolution images. It's giving us really the first really detailed look at this huge megathrust fault that we, we've long known about, but we, we haven't really had many details. For the first time, researchers realize this fault isn't just one continuous structure running along the west coast. It's broken up into at least four pieces. The size of those segments is likely to dictate the magnitude of future earthquakes and tsunamis. This helped them pinpoint where a rupture might cause the most damage. And there's one spot in particular that now has them worried. Researchers found that most of this fault line is relatively jagged. And this is actually good news, because the more uneven it is, the more speed bumps are in the way to slow the movement of tectonic plates. And that could actually limit the size of the earthquake. But if it's smoother, the whole thing could snap all at once, creating a much bigger transfer of energy. And there's one segment that they found that's unusually smooth. For me, the big take home point is that the northern part of this fault actually looks quite different from the southern part. This northern part he's referring to there stretches from southern Vancouver Island alongside Washington State, more or less ending at the Oregon border. And it's here researchers now think the big one is most likely to happen. It's flatter and smoother than the other segments to the south. Those are characteristics um, that are conducive for the, the most damaging earthquakes. And not only is this section smoother than the others, it's also more shallow, meaning the so-called rupture zone would be closer to land. So that means the source of the shaking could be closer to um, Vancouver Island, where people live, and, and Vancouver. And also the source of the tsunami could be a little bit closer to that coastline. So I do think that's important for early warning systems. The federal government and the province of British Columbia are both working on these early warning systems, meant to give people a few minutes notice before the shaking starts or the waves from the tsunami come in. Researchers say, given what they now know, that notice window could get even shorter. This information of 
where the ocean plate is, how it's dipping, how shallow it is, how smooth it is. That feeds directly into our ability to um, to to generate and model uh, tsunamis as well and understand what to expect. Now, if they're larger, that means that they're going to generate slightly stronger ground motions, so they m might impact a little further inland. So not just you know Victoria and Vancouver Island, but also Vancouver will be heavily shaken in this earthquake. This is critical new information that will help those cities in particular prepare. They can update building codes, evacuation plans, and model out which areas might be most vulnerable. The ground shaking is gonna be violent. The tsunami wave is gonna be, you know, is gonna be huge. So we, we do need to think about how we can better prepare. And now that we can see what we're dealing with, those preparations, experts say, can't come soon enough.